All right, this is uh, California Sea Best Practice exam question number two. Okay, so what we have here is a percentage problem. After we solve this problem, feel free to move on to the next video or you can stick around a little bit because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how not only to solve this problem, but I'm going to show you how to solve many other types of percentage problems using proportion. Okay, now we're not going to use a proportion to solve this problem, but when I move to the next way of solving this problem, which we'll do just after we're finished here, you're going to have a method whereby you are going to be able to solve any percentage problem that you see and do it very simply. Okay, let's get started with, um, with the solution to this problem. On the three sections of a math test, a student correctly answered the number of questions shown in the table above. What percentage or what percent of the questions on the entire test did the student answer correctly? Sometimes what makes, uh, makes a, a test question confusing is um, the wording. And if you're finding the wording to be a little bit fuzzy in your head, and you say, okay, I'm not sure really what it's asking me, what you want to do before you start trying to solve the problem is you want to reread the question and try to almost put that question into your own words if you can. A lot of times it will help you if you can think of uh, ways to diagram. We'll go ahead and just do a simple diagram on, on this one just so you can kind of see. But what this diagramming does is it really does sometimes help you uh, when you're trying to understand word problems, okay? So what does it say? We have this. Rep let's let this this um, well, rectangle represent the math test, okay? And there are three sections to the math test, right? Sections one, two, three. We have algebra, trigonometry, and geometry. So let's let that section just go like this, okay? We're just uh, drawing uh, uh, some some sections here. Go ahead and erase that. All right. So this is section number one, let's call it algebra. This is section number two, let's call it trigonometry. And let's call this section number three, geometry, okay? Well now, there are a total number of questions in the algebra section. So if we get a total here of 20, and the student answered 17 correct here. Here on trigonometry, the student had a total of 15 questions. And out of the 15, the student answered 11 correctly. Total number of questions on the geometry section were 25 and the student answered 20 correctly. Now look, I realize that for many of you looking at this video you're thinking, God this is just, you know, I, I don't need it broken down uh, like this. Well, I understand that, but but what we're really, tr what I'm trying to show you is I'm trying to take a very simple problem here and I'm trying to explain to you that if you do some diagramming, it can sometimes really help you in uh, making sure that you are interpreting the question correctly, okay? This question itself could be written in a number of different ways. This question could have asked you uh, what the percentage was correct on the trigonometry and the geometry sections only, right? And you'd need to be able to figure that out, and which you can do, of course. But sometimes, for some students, it helps to diagram. All right. In this case, this question is asking us to get the percentage of questions that the student answered correctly on the entire test. So how do we do that? We're going to add that, add these sections, that, that is the total number of questions, compare them to the total number of correct answers, okay? So let's go ahead and add these up together if you haven't already done this. Here we have uh, in words, we have 48 questions correct out of 60. How do we represent that? The way we represent that is to go like this. 48 out of 60 equals. Now you may remember this uh, as uh, this looks to you like 48 divided by 60 and that could very very well is you you may look at it and say it's a fraction. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But for, for what we're doing with the percentage problem, this is how we write 48 out of 60. Now, just use your calculator, 0.8, okay? 
Well, we're going to add the zero here because 0.8, of course, is the same thing as 0 0.80. And that tells us it's 80%. All right, so we know just by looking that the answer is going to be 80%. If you don't already know that, let me just rewrite this. 80% is the same, can be rewritten as 0 0.80, can be rewritten as 80 over 100. Okay? All of that uh, is, uh, it's exactly the same thing. Now, if you want to move ahead and move forward to your next uh, next question, then go for it. What I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to show you how to solve percentage problems using uh, proportion. And that's what's uh, a really uh, excellent method. If you ever get stuck, you can use uh, proportions to solve percentage problems. So <clears throat> let me show you how to set that up. We wrote that out as 48 over 60. All right. We're going to set this up as a proportion. We're going to set this up as a proportion because all percentage problems can be solved if you use proportion. So if you're just really struggling with how to set up a problem, use a proportion. Uh, it's, uh, it's simple. It's uh, easy to solve. So let me just exp show you how to do this. All right. Let's then work with the number that's always associated with percentages, and that's something out of 100. Okay, now, before I go any further, let me just make sure I explain to you. Look, 5 out of 100 is the same thing as 5%, just like 48 out of 100 is equal to 48%, okay? 20% is the same thing as 20 out of a hundred okay so that's 20% all right so um, that's the reason we're using 100 it's not just an arbitrary number it's uh, it's a number that we use because percentages are always something out of 100 okay so when you're dealing with percentages you can always set this up like this this 100 represents a whole this 60 is the whole. It's, it's the entire amount of what you're working with. Okay, It's the entire amount that you have to deal with. Okay, So we, in this case, have been given that by through calculation because we have a total number of questions. So that's 60. That's the whole. Let's, we are going to set this up as a proportion. So if 60 if we let 60 equal 100, in other words, if we we need to do something to make 60 equal 100, okay? How do we solve that? With proportions, it's always the same. Cross multiply right here. We're going to cross multiply these two together, okay? And then we're going to divide by the one that's left. So 48 times 100 is 4,800, and you divide this by 60, 80. And so 80 out of 100 is 80 percent. Isn't that cool? That's cross multiplication. Every percentage problem can be solved by using cross multiplication. It's, it's an awesome way to solve um, percentage problems if you just are still a little uncomfortable with it. So we are making we are setting up a proportion problem when you set up a proportion problem for percentages we always have a hundred one hundred as the denominator uh, over here on uh, on this side all right we're going to then cross multiply cross multiplication is nothing more than taking the uh, opposing numbers here we have 48 in the numerator here multiply it by this 100 we get 48 hundred and we divide it by 60. That gives us, if you if you work that out, of course, that will give us 80 over 100, right? It's going to give us 80, which is the same thing as 0 0.80, which is also the same thing as 80%. Okay? All right, let's make sure you understand this. How would I solve this question? What percentage of the exam 
are the combination of algebra and trigonometry questions. So how would we solve that problem? We want to know what percentage of the algebra and trigonometry questions uh, make up the entire test, right? All right, so let's go ahead and look at this. 20 plus uh, 15 is, of course, 35 out of what? Well, the, our total, what's our sum total? Our sum total was, we have 60 questions, right? So we want to know what 35 out of 60 equals. Well, of course, you can just use your calculator, divide, we go 35 divided by 60, and you'll get the answer. But the other way to solve it, is using proportions. 35 times 100 gives us 3500. Divide 3500 by 60 and we get, if you count, we get 58.3 percent. Okay, 58.3 out of 100 which is the same thing as 58.3 percent. So these two questions or these two sections represent 58.3 percent of the entire exam. Okay, hopefully I've uh, shed some light on percentage problems for you and uh, we'll go through uh, some other percentage problems uh, in the CBEST and uh, see how you do on those and we'll continue to work with those.